Hi, I'm John Harmon from Atlantic Outboard here. We're on a 328 pursuit today, and we're going to walk you through the basics of getting started with your electronics and turning things, turning your electronics on, and going through the basics. So when you first walk on your boat, you're going to turn on your main engine battery to on and your house and generator battery to on. Then you're going to power up your electronic switch, your main house switch, your main helm switch, cockpit amp. Now you've powered up your screen, we come to your home screens here. In your home screen you have nav charts, fishing charts, 3D charts, fish eye, radar overlay, fish mapping, precipitation, forecasts, sea temperatures, and sea conditions. Every screen, depending on what stuff you have integrated into it, will determine on what screens and what pages show up. On our sonar, we have options of traditional, split zoom, split frequency, and many other live scope that are available if you have those transducers integrated to your boat. On radar, we have single, dual, and overlay over the charts. Then we have a dual overlay radar. Those ne might necessarily be there if you do not have a heading sensor integrated to the motor or to, to the boat. We're going to start with nav charts. Nav charts are going to have land features and buoys and navigational features on this chart. This is the most important chart for running your boat. You will not see a lot of contours for the fishing. We'll go into that later. But to move the screen around, you can either use your finger, sliding the screen side to side, or you can pinch the zoom to zoom into an area you're traveling to or looking for. You can also use the plus and minus arrows on the screen to zoom in and out. And when you find yourself away from your boat and you can't find your boat, hit stop panning and it'll bring you centered screen back into where your boat is. Now we're back to the home screen here and we now we have, we've went through nav charts and now we're gonna go into fishing charts. Fishing charts are gonna have as many features as the navigational charts will, but when we zoom in, we're gonna have these lines here and these are their contour lines. Those are your geographical lines for underwater where you have structure coming up and down. As the lines get tighter together, it's the steeper the edge of it is. The bigger flatter areas are bigger flatter open land or open water bottom. As we move over to out into the ocean here, we can see that there's our navigational markers and we see that we have large flat areas and we have contoured areas where the channels are. You'll see that the steep edges of the channels are on either side of the green and red buoys. We can hit stop panning to come back to where we are, We're centered in. Now that we've done navigation charts, we're gonna go into fishing charts. The only real difference is in the fishing charts versus the navigational charts is that we have bottom contour. Our bottom contour is these very light blue lines here and they show where the bottom changes. You'll see over here you have your six foot lines, you have your 36 feet lines in the same very close area. As you can see is there's a small deep area in the center here with shallow progressions going up to the shallow water either side of this channel. Now that we've gone through our basic charting features, we're going to move on to sonar. We're going to start with traditional sonar. On the screen right now, how it's set up from Garmin, it'll have your depth, your temperature, your speed, system voltage, time. And here we can see we're coming across the bottom and we have some structure with some fish. We're also on an auto zoom right now which is where you always want to kind of be unless you're trying to zoom in on some particular spot on the bottom of the, of the ocean. And you're in a chirp, using a chirp transducer in a chirp setting. The most common problem we see is that people have the transmission off of the transducer. The tra tra transducer is actually turned off. So we, this is done by hitting the transmit button here and it says off. Well, we a lot of time get on the boats and we find that that's been turned off. and when, when that's off, when we go back to the son traditional sonar page, we'll see that the depth does not change. And down here it says transmission disabled. 
So we can easily go back into the screen and hit menu, turn transmit back on, go back, and our sonar is up and running. Now that we went through traditional sonar, we're going to show you split zoom and split frequency. Split frequency allows us to show two different frequencies. Our common frequencies we see is a high and a low. The low picks up better bottom structure and the high will pick up more of the fish and the things that are in the water column, bait and whatnot. We're going to go back to home and we have split zoom. Split zoom allows us to zoom in on a particular spot on the bottom. Like you can see here, we're from zero to 450 feet, but here we're only from two, we're only looking at from 220 feet to 426 feet. By simply scrolling up and down this menu here, we can zoom in on the spot, I'll zoom in on where we want to actually look at. Now that we've gone through the basic sonars, and we're going to go on to move on to radars. We're going to go to a single range radar. You can see in the top corners we have this bar here. It says our transmit on, has our gain for high and low. We have our M scope, we have trails on, and we have water and rain clutter off. On the screen here, the center of the screen is where your boat is. We have right here, we're tracking a target that's moving closer to us, closer to us. As it passes us, it changes to green, which means it's going away from us now, and it's a safe target. We have land here, a channel here, and we have a seawall of some sort in this area. The common problems we find with the radar, when we get onto a boat and the customer says to us, I can't work the radar, I don't know how to work it. We find that a lot of time, that up in the upper corner here, this, this X-MIT is on off. Well, you have to have the X-MIT to be on for the scanner to function and the scanner to run. We also use the plus and minus keys here to get further and closer for our range. Here on the bottom, we have quarter inch rings right now, a quarter mile rings. So each ring is one quarter mile away from us and we're on a three quarter mile scale. By zooming in and out, you can see that we change our rings. The distance between our rings go from one mile to two and then we have a two mile pitcher across the whole thing. One thing we also find if you don't have this menu up here is that when you hit the menu a lot of time you'll see here is radar you can press the radar standby when you want the radar to stop spinning or this will be say this will say ready to transmit and you haven't pressed that button to transmit the radar. Now that we've went through single range radar, we have also dual radar and we have overlay. First, we're gonna go through dual. Dual radar has two ranges of radars. Here, we're looking at one mile and look at here, we're looking at three quarters of a mile. We can go by using the plus and minus keys. We can zoom in and out. We can go out to three miles, which then shows us a far out picture to see if we're tracking targets at a far but then we have a close radar here showing us that we are tracking these small t these targets that are coming at us here and here we have land feature and land feature here and here's a moving object coming through our screen and over here you can see how zoomed out it is and we have the very hard to see that vessel coming at us the other popular radar we have is a overlay radar overlay shows the chart below the radar and you can hear, see here how clear now that this radar is over the top of land, the land feature here. Obviously that the light, the dark green here is actually probably underwater a bit during different tides and the radar is not picking up well. We can also see that we're tracking this vessel so you can tell that it's a difference between land, it's actually moving towards us. Here we have a water feature that's coming out of the land, out of the bottom here because we can see that it's about one foot deep there and this edge here must have a rocky feature. That sums up our basic electronics training for Garmin Marine on our Pursuit 328 here. Uh, thanks for visiting us. You can visit us more at uh, AtlanticOutboard.com and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.